Hello guys, I'm Naval Yamal. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Data Master. So in this video, we are going to see what are the interview questions on the Databricks side as well as on the Spark side. So let us start with the first question. What is Databricks? So Databricks is a data and AI company now. So data and AI company. The original creators of this Databricks is the same persons those who have developed Spark. So the person those who developed Spark, they wanted a platform to run this Spark. So they have introduced Databricks. Now more than 10,000 customers are using Databricks. It is a cloud-based platform. Let me show you the website. Yeah, so let me search Databricks on Google. So now it's not just a Databricks, it's a Databricks and Lakehouse platform. So we will be discussing what is that Lakehouse and so on. Uh, so for now you can say Lakehouse, it is a combination of or it combines both Data Lake and Data Warehouse. So if you are coming from any data background, you might be a person of data analyst, data science, machine learning, data engineering, you have to do something with your data bricks. Data bricks unites or unifies all these people together. So coming to a question again, so data bricks is a cloud based platform. Let me show you here. Yeah. So Databricks develops a web based platform for working with the Spark. Okay. So moving forward to the second question, Databricks architecture. So when it comes to Databricks architecture, there are two planes in that Databricks architecture. One is data plane and one is control plane. So before we go to this question, you should understand how the Databricks works. So for that, let me open my whiteboard. Yeah. So if you want to start with Databricks, Databricks is just a platform. So Databricks is just a platform. They have the software with them. Okay. They, it's like a software. They do not have any cloud with them. So if you want to use Databricks, Databricks has to relay on any of the cloud provider because the again when it comes to big data the biggest question is where to store the data where to store you need a big storage for that and you need to process the data to process the data you need virtual machines you need a clusters so databricks do not have the databricks do not have any cloud provider with them so what they have to do if you want to use databricks you have to deploy the databricks in any of the cloud platform in any of the cloud provider so you can choose all three cloud top tech cloud providers for example you can use azure you can use aws or you can use gcp okay so let us assume that i have used azure databricks okay i have used databricks with a cloud provider of azure so now what is the role so when you are deploying Databricks with Azure, you are deploying means you are getting a service or resources from the Azure. You are using Databricks. So you get two planes. You get a architecture that architectures get divided into your data plane and your control plane. Okay, control plane. So let me show you from the internet and then we'll move forward. So Databricks architecture, okay. Yeah. So there are two things here. One is data plane. You can see this data plane, data plane, and then a control plane. So data plane means you can call this as a customer cloud account. You can also call this data plane as a customer cloud account, or you can just simply say, cloud account or a cloud provider and control plane means your Databricks account. Databricks people will handle this. Databricks people have a control on that. So coming to the point data plane, data plane means 
customer's cloud provider cloud account or the cloud provider account means in this case azure account so what they will provide hey they will provide as a virtual machines for your computation they will provide a storage they will provide a storage like your what is your storage your storage is your data lake so they will provide who databricks will provide if you are using aws aws will provide virtual machines aws will provide storage for databricks then what databricks is giving databricks is giving their ui their software they are giving you their web ui you can use web ui they are giving you notebook they are giving you workflow workflow and they are giving you a cluster management so whatever the cluster manager you you want to do you can do all that in your databricks account so let me show it here again so in a data plane they are giving you a clusters you can see clus uh, this is a cloud account yeah cluster and your storage you can see storage it might be on your azure blob storage or it might be your s3 aws s3 so in a simple term cloud account will give you virtual machine and your dbfs or your storage whereas your control plane will give you databricks web application customer notebooks your jobs and your cluster manager so if you want i'll just take one minute to draw this diagram again so at a top level you have two major things here one is data plane and a control plane so let me write it here this is your data plane or also called as a cloud account cloud account cloud account so what they are going to provide in this cloud account they are going to provide two things here one is virtual machines databricks uh, azure is going to provide your virtual machine in case of aws ec2 instance will provide and you get your blob storage in case of azure in case of aws s3 then talking about the next plane that is your control plane as a keyword itself indicates control control means the control is in your databricks people databricks people will do that so there are two things here uh, sorry there are four things one is they will give you a web ui that is their website where you can do all the big data processing then they give you a notebook notebooks and they give you a uh, jobs and they also give you a cluster management so cluster management so this is how the databricks architecture works like okay management okay moving to the next question what is the databricks cluster or you can they can ask you what is compute so when it comes to databricks a group of computers group of virtual computers is called as a cluster so the, uh, in the cluster you will have one worker node sorry one driver node and n number of worker nodes depending upon the use case so let me uh, show you how the compute looks like so i already have a databricks running yeah you can see so i have one cluster running for me so with my name you can see so in this scenario i have taken a compute or a cluster which has one driver which has one driver one driver so obviously for one cluster you will get one driver and you get n number of worker nodes in uh, in this cluster i have taken one or two worker nodes okay so minimum worker nodes will be one maximum worker nodes will be two so a group of all this with one driver one or two workers is called as a cluster is called as a cluster so let us move to the next question that is types of clusters so when it comes to databricks there are basically two types of clusters one is all purpose cluster and second is job cluster or you can call as all purpose compute and job compute so when it comes to all purpose cluster or all purpose compute 
it is used or it is also called as an interactive cluster all purpose cluster is called as an interactive cluster interactive so why it is interactive like suppose i have a group of people interactive cluster i have four to five uh, people in my team all can work together on the same cluster on the same cluster i mean in the same group of computers suppose i create a group of computer i mean a cluster i'll add few people in that it may be a individual user or it may be a group of user all can use that same cluster without any difficulty so that is called as an all purpose cluster interactive cluster so for development for development we use all purpose cluster only then the second type is your job cluster or it is also called as a job compute job compute is basically non interactive it is not interactive you cannot use it like a development or you cannot work together with that but it is used for your pipeline purpose it is used to execute your pipeline and once your job is done once your task is done it will auto terminate it will automatically terminate means your cluster will automatically stop once the pipeline has executed once the job has executed your cluster will terminate in the case of job job cluster but in all purpose cluster your uh, cluster won't terminate unless you stop it unless there is some inactivity then only it will stop otherwise this all purpose cluster won't stop but job compute or a job cluster will automatically terminate it once the job is done so the cost depending on the all purpose and the job cluster is also a huge difference so let me show you the cost part so okay so you can see i have Uh, been to a website called databricks pricing so if you just scroll down you can see jobs is costing you this much per dbu so what is dbu dbu stands for databricks unit so that is a unit for which we charge like databricks people charge so let me show you suppose if i open my cluster that is up and that is running you can see this will cost me anyway around 2 dbu that is 2 databricks units per hour 2 to 3 dbu per hour so dbu stands for databricks units so you can see job cluster is costing you anywhere between 0.07 and this is costing you anywhere between 0.40 dbu so you can see the difference but obviously when you go uh, click on this and use the settings like which plan you are using so when it comes to databricks there are three different plans one is standard plan premium and enterprise standard will cost you less as compared to the premium and depending on the cloud you choose suppose i'll choose all per, uh, like premium with an azure account and all purpose compute is costing you around this much per dbu and all purpose compute with photon so photon is a new engine that will massively parallelize high performance like if you are doing a high performance workload then you can go for the photon engine also so when you are setting up a cluster here you get an option called photon acceleration so this will accelerate your workload uh, that reducing your time but obviously it may increase a cost that is called as a photon engine so depending upon your use case uh, you may charge it different but a job cluster will charge you less as compared to the all purpose cluster so apart from these two databricks as one more cluster but we cannot say it as a cluster one more compute that is called as a databricks sql so in databricks sql we have a sql warehouse so we will talk about that once we see what is databricks sql yeah so we have covered what is dbu also dbu stands for databricks units okay so now let me talk about deployment in databricks so what is deployment in databricks so if you are deploying your databricks as i have told you if you are deploying your databricks you can use or you have to choose any of the cloud provider so when you are choosing azure please listen when you are choosing an azure databricks it is your platform as a service 
platform as a service you have to manage your compute when it comes to azure like if you uh, like fall less in your compute or if you want some more cpus you have to manage it by your own so that's why azure databricks is a platform as a service but when it comes to aws databricks aws databricks is a software as a service you don't need to manage anything aws people will do everything for you you just use databricks as a software so this is very important when it comes to aws databricks it is a software as a service you don't need to do anything the aws people will take care of everything but when it comes to azure databricks it is a platform as a service if you need some management on the compute side or some cpus and so on you have to do it explicitly by your own so that's why azure databricks is also called as an pass that is platform as a service AWS Databricks is called as a software as a service. I hope you understood these questions, guys. So this is just a part one of the Databricks interview questions. So uh, thank you for watching. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel, and I request you to watch the second video also, part two on this. Thank you again. Keep learning.